Good morning, everybody. Got us a little bit of meditation music. It's not very wag me, wag me Wednesday music. More well, like a. <laughs> <laughs> also, Mbop by Hanson. <laughs> Ooh, Mbop. Well, I played this one before. Yeah, you said you said we we were we were hitting that well too much. Oh, I never said that. I just said I like that song. <laughs> I never said that. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> This one is a little more, a little more vibing, a little more bounce in your head. Did you see the the figure for the Crypto.com Arena? The figure? What do you like, mean? Like the how long the agreement is, and like what the term is? Uh, let's see. We we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but twenty years. Yeah, we will. It's twenty years, but you know how much the dollar amount. i have seen. I didn't know it, but I, I'm cheating right now, and I'm I'm, I'm seeing. So, it, you know. It's oh, I was gonna have a guessing game. Oh well. I ruined it. I ruined it by looking at the yeah. end. All right. Maybe Christine. See you doesn't. all tomorrow. We'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Steven cheated. <laughs> we got to end this thing. Maybe Christine doesn't know it. We can play the guessing game with her. Yeah. I bet she knows it though. She's in too many. She's in too many talks to to not have heard the the figure. I think that's such a hot topic, right? Like, I think that's like a huge move to. I never thought Staples Center would change their name or that they even had a price on that. Well, in school, you were told that you were going to use cursive your entire life. And uh, <laughs> let's see how that turned out. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that long ago you had to, you took typing, right? Off, off typewriters. And just like two decades later now, Staples. I'm so happy that we don't have to write by hand anymore because I couldn't even read my own handwriting sometimes. It's uh, My cursive was never very good. I'm always more of a print kind of writing person anyway. Although whenever I do these VCs I do have a pen and pad near me because sometimes somebody, I'm not very good at remembering names and just slight details. I'm just too ADD for that. And so yeah occasionally something somebody will say I will write down with good old fashioned pen and paper in front of me. So I'm keeping staples alive. Yeah, right. The Michael Scott Paper Company. Right, right, yeah. Dunder Mifflin can still stay in business because of good people like me using pen and paper. Uh, it's probably the only time I use pen and paper. But now, who's going to know about staples without a, a nice shiny arena that's named it? Named after it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to <laughs> pivot. We'll have to pivot. You think so? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how Staples pivots. Uh, I mean, there will always be some need for office supplies and just stuff like that. But uh, more people working from home, which probably means more people are less need for their products. Yeah, they, they're either going to have to pivot or, or die on the vine. One of the two. Maybe this gets into stock talk. It, it does. For sure it does. Uh, ooh, we got we got a hand raised already. We got a hand raised. Yeah. Well, well let me do an introduction real quick, and I'll, I'll bring them on. I'll, let's, let, let's see what... Uh, uh, Sam has to say. Well, I am Stephen. I am the voice of DeFi. With me here on the stage is Christine. She is the uh, co-host as well as Smart Rick. Today we're going to talk about Wag Me Wednesday and all that goes with that. And part of the big discussion that we're going to have is this Crypto.com Arena changing from Staples Arena to Crypto.com Arena, which is a big move and gets a lot of eyes on the scene. So yeah, we want to talk about that a little bit today. And then also wherever the conversation has to, happens to take us. But Sam, how are you doing today? And uh, I guess you heard us talking a little bit in the beginning. Do you have any thoughts on all this news uh, stories? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry. I was taking my vitamins. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, I was listening to multiple radio shows this morning, man. And people are pretty pissed about it. But I don't even see why. Like, people are already talking about getting petitions going. Like, you know, there was some negative things about crypto set. Obviously, people are not about it. But I remember when they were building Staples Center. I live in Southern California. So I remember when they were actually building Staples Center. And people were pissed that they were going to call it Staples Center. So it's like, they, it's, they just, people are just want something to complain about. They don't, it doesn't matter what they would have named it. People would have been pissed about it. You California people, y'all just aren't happy. <laughs> I crazy. think they're just mad that they're not call it, calling it the Kobe Center. I think is really what they're upset about right now. All right, Kobe, for sure. No. You yeah. know? Uh, yeah, like, I, I, it's not their fault Staples didn't renew the lease. Like, I'm sure if they wanted to pay $700 <laughs> exactly. million, dollars, like, they probably could. But Staples, staples can't even afford it anymore, right? Like, how many not. Staples no. are there? 
Right. I think that was the big thing is the staples just they can't afford it anymore. And crypto came through with the money and they were like, We're gonna take it over and people are upset about it. But like I said, it's they could have named it anything and anybody could have taken it over and everybody would have been mad anyways. Trader versus center. Well that's I was you took Ooh. the words out of my mouth, Christine. It's a twenty year term for uh, crypto dot com. In the year twenty forty one Look out for Trader versus Center. <laughs> Trader versus. Yeah. I mean, I think we should. I think we should buy the F- Ford Field from the Lions and do something with that franchise because that'd be a real coming of age. Like, not only did we do something great with our our social platform and cryptocurrency, but then also we took the Lions to the Super Bowl. And we but you do it right. Now. If you do it right now, you'd be buying the dip on the Lions. So I uh, mean, <laughs> we. I mean, buying the dip. It's been a dip for. <laughs> I mean, like they almost that could be not the Lions. They could just be. Detroit. I mean, we've had a couple yep. of dead cat bounces and we've made the wild card, but I mean, like, like that's just pitiful. But you know, we can talk about my depression and Detroit sports <laughs> another day. Up next, race depression. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> great, to, great topic. But yeah, I, I do think for it being crypto.com arena. First of all, it's Los Angeles. Okay, major media market uh, that lots of eyes are on. And as far as the NBA is concerned, uh, you know the most premier player as far as I'm not getting into who's better, who's who's best. I'm getting into how many eyes are on LeBron and the Lakers and one of the LeBron premier teams. James. Yeah, LeBron James. James. Thank you. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I know you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and then taking that into you know the Clippers, there's just, there's just so many eyes on that arena. And to name it Crypto.com, first of all, I'm assuming Crypto.com has done their research to say you know what uh, what's valuable. And seven hundred million, which okay, now I said the I said the number, seven hundred million. That, yeah, that's a lot of dollars. That's a lot of sats. Okay, so to be able to put that much over twenty years, it tells me that they've probably done their research to show this will come back to us by going right here. I uh, see so we have somebody with their hand up. Fake hair bear. You, so. you think it's an ETH? Do you think that seven hundred thousand is an ETH? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Did they pay in check or in? Sheep, it's definitely Sheba Doge. No, Was it not. million or thousand? million for million. Oh, okay no i jumped in i just got on here um i'm on my lunch break here at home uh mm-hmm. cooking lunch but I, I think i jumped into a conversation about the stable center getting switched over to crypto indeed yeah so somebody mentioned how um a lot of people are upset that the name is switching over um it's a generational thing you know uh a lot of people have like the the experiences and like the teams like whatever whatever, whatever era of those la teams legacy is those but in um you know, in 20 years, this younger generation is going to be upset if it ever switches off to, you know, something else, because um, this is something that they can relate to going forward. It, this is this is something that's prevalent in, in arenas all over the place. But Staples obviously has, you know, the Lakers is a very world renowned brand, a lot of bandwagoners, and it's just got a lot behind it. I thought I me personally, like I grew up watching the NBA and I know about the Staples Center, but even this excites me because, you know, we're in this we're in this crypto space together. So for it to have some sort of uh, relevance to sports now, I think is very cool. You, you might be a Lakers fan. Did, what I am the, not a La- I am not oh. a Lakers fan. You're like to be clear. Well, maybe yeah. you know the answer to my question. Then you know each team has one branded portion on their jersey. Uh, mm. What's the Lakers this year? Does anybody know it's what? Wish I think. Oh, it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Wish. Okay, so so they didn't have already. I, I was wondering if they already had some sort of relationship with Crypto.com, but it sounds like they didn't, and maybe instead they just. Uh, beat them down with 700 million and like they're going to turn that down yeah the so they're going to two for one too i mean or actually more than that i mean like the clippers play there the kings play there like uh you know not not that hockey's super prevalent in la but you know but now i guess when when is it going to become like the the l instead of like the lakers or or the clippers it's like the la hash rate or like the la you know like when when do we get when we get in the, the mascot change i want a jersey of the la hash rate yes Uh, I wanted in that that uh... the LA dips. I like the dips. That'd be that'd be, that'd be fun. That sounds, that sounds more insulting than it does favorable. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yo yo. Just want to chime in real quick that uh, yeah, the seventy sixers actually have crypto dot com on their jerseys or had. Um, so they've been around, and now that they bought the stadium, that's a huge deal. But I think I'm more excited to see uh, crypto dot com and other big name companies in the metaverse instead for stadiums. It's the. I mean, they have. Uh the ufc as well i mean crypto.com and like just for like the whole like you know if this is marketing for all of us you know the whole web3 space it's crypto.com i mean yeah it's a singapore based exchange but like and that's where you would go to if you put it into your browser but like just the word crypto it's just so over 
overarching to the whole industry where now it's like people are like, oh man, remember that Bitcoin? That guy spent 10,000 Bitcoin on a pizza. Now it's like on the Staples Center. Like we're bleeding into like mainstream media and like it's going to be great for everybody. Well, yeah, it legitimizes it, right? Uh, let's say you just kind of heard of crypto. You got your crazy friend in the office that mentions Bitcoin every now and then. And you know a little bit about it, but you think that's what those, that's that magic internet money for nerds, right? And then, uh, you know, now your favorite basketball team has has named its arena, you know, its sponsorship with Crypto.com. And it's, uh, for a industry moving standpoint, it's a great sponsorship because, you know, it wasn't called KuCoin or something like that, that you don't really, it's not self-explanatory. Crypto.com. I mean, it's right there out in front and it's going to say, you know, Crypto.com is going to easily legitimize the space just because of exposure to it. You'll, you'll no longer have it from just the crazy guy in the next cubicle. It'll actually be, like I said, right there in front. Every time you turn on the TV, every time you log into the Internet, you will see, you know, live from not the Staples Center, but from Crypto.com Arena. Yeah, when you get to like a, a minor league affiliate baseball team with like Dogecoin. That'll happen, I'll bet. Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. And it'd be good for for Doge or, or, or Shiba or some of those. And they may think of themselves as too big for that type of a project. But that that will happen. I, I, I will bet it, it will happen with a sponsorship. And maybe this will be the first, first uh, you know, Lego brick of kind of building up uh, a lot of sports and crypto or just entertainment crypto combining. Well, I know that um, Mark Cuban, right? He's like, he was one of the first to, I don't know if he was one of the first, but the first big names to incorporate crypto. Um, especially Doge with sports, like how he had with the Mavericks. Like he was like, oh, we accept Doge um, for the tickets and the merchandise or whatever. And everyone was like, what is he doing? But, you know, obviously he had the idea and everyone's shifting. And Crypto.com has been making their name known in like a lot of the sports sectors, like what you guys said, UFC and everything. Like I always would notice Crypto.com. Wow. I'm like, how much money does do these guys have? (laughs) <laughs> a lot oh. yeah a lot apparently it's an investment <laughs> in themselves too like obviously but like yeah. that's it's you know and, I, and we talked about it earlier offline about how like the santa claus run that's coming like this is just perfect time for this kind of news did they miss a uh marketing opportunity to crypto people by not making it 690 million just just talking out loud here <laughs> i mean yeah 600 yeah well, 6900 420 million or whatever uh, yeah that would well, be right i mean it's 700 million it could have easily been, been 690 million and yeah that would have been 10 million less but they uh, countered they must have countered they were just they got a little greedy <laughs> so you think the initial offer was 690 <laughs> and uh, they came back with 700 that would be really funny and really you know part of the course <laughs> right 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 well i, I just know that I mean, it's funny because you know whenever you're looking at any chart if it's somewhere near 69 or 420, then you're everybody's always looking for like resistance or support at 69 or 420, regardless of what uh, crypto asset it is. If that's the case, then people like they like that number so much they start setting uh, sell walls and buy walls near that number. So I don't know if that had anything to do with this negotiation. The emotional maturity of a crypto trader. It's, it's funny if you go and look at the uh, the construction costs on the wiki page for the Staples Center, even if for inflation. The the center itself only cost five hundred and eighty three million to build. Wow, wow. that is crazy. That's yeah. a cra- that's a great little stat. You, you, the the twenty year sponsorship actually brings in more money than what it costs to build. Now, granted, I know it was built some time ago, but uh, yeah, that that that's a great stat. Uh, I think Scam Art has a yes. His hand his hand hurt his arm hurts now. Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, just wanted to ask: Has anyone used Crypto.com? I live in New York City. I live in New York City, so um, I downloaded the app a few months ago, actually, and it's it's locked in our region. Uh, but I do think we can buy the the token for for the app. But I'm just wondering if anyone's used the app itself. So I have, I have, I have, I have the debit card, um, like the lowest tiered one. Yes, yeah, CRO is what it is. Uh, yeah, you know, like they have some pretty cool, like features if you like have a lot of the tokens as well like pays for your netflix pays for your hulu and like discounts on expedia or some, something like that um you know i don't use the debit card very often it was more of a like oh i want this thing and i just kind of did the minimum to get it just because i'm a collector i guess of, of that but um I have, I have some friends who use it pretty regularly and like they say the coin based one's easier to use but it's still a pretty decent um card Wow. I've always wondered how Crypto.com works, and now I'm even more interested because they've made such a legendary move for us like this. 
Yeah, it's real interesting to me. You know, one of the things that I wonder, you just said that one of their promotions is like they'll play, pay for your Netflix flicks, basically. If you have their credit card, then your Netflix is, is paid for. But I wonder also if they're going to have some promotions with things that have to do with the crypto.com arena is it going to be you know discounted tickets or you know access to some sort of events they they can do that and it may obviously push their brand more and whenever you know their brand gets pushed it also kind of pushes the crypto brand more people are like okay i could get 10 percent off my tickets if i pay for it in you know crow their native you know the people may look into that because they may want to save that 10 percent. right yeah that's they exactly. like that marketplace that's exactly what i told christine this morning about an hour ago that's that's the only reason i jumped in and uh bought the coin because i feel like it's a it's a good long-term play not financial advice but um i think that that's a game changer right there it's like you're gonna go into state uh crypto.com <laughs> see they have a coin why not invest if it comes with perks i feel like the infusement the infusion of like being able to use like a doge or like a crypto's payment for concessions and merge you know nft tickets like there's so much they could do and using the state the crypto.com arena i don't know when it goes into effect um as december like the, 25th oh thank you very Chris, much hey wow what uh, a good clutch, present clutch um and it could be like a really cool proving ground of this business model and like like very i, I i'm very bullish on it uh, rise how is it how has it been uh performing since you bought like is it is it up a bunch I don't, i'm not looking at it Oh, I, bought it this morning. I bought it this morning at 50 cents, but I know last night it was like a 32 or 38. Nice little pump, for sure. Yeah, for, for sure. You I know, bought it like an hour ago. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm, yeah I'm, you're see, their I'm marketing is working. Their marketing is working. I'm in, I'm in it long term, so I'm not really worried about it. But I do feel like that stadium now with that type of money put into it is going to get like a brand new, like they're going to remodel it for sure. You know, I've never even thought about something that you guys just said, and that is all the advantages here of crypto being in there. But if you've heard me talk before, I'll dream, I'll kind of, you know, dream about, oh, if our sports tickets or our music tickets were as an NFT. And now that you have a major sponsorship with a major arena and therefore major team, if the Lakers started saying like, hey, we want to try to do NFT ticketing, if it can be done with the Lakers, it literally could be done with any team um, in any arena. If it can happen in that arena, all of a sudden, like the template is out for the world. If they're doing it, this isn't some little minor league baseball stadium. It's amazing. Yeah. So if they can pull it off, it gives proof to everyone. I, else. I agree with that. Uh, I, I agree with that. But at the same time, like Lakers is probably the, like one. They're like the Coca Cola of the NBA. Like everybody in the world knows who the Lakers are because of you know, whatever generations of Magic and, and Kareem and LeBron and Kobe, obviously. But yeah, I, 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 I agree that anybody can do it, but Lakers are definitely going to have an easier time with it. Let me, let me just stop you guys right there because you guys are just mentioning the Lakers. And so Staples Center, yeah, like we know it because of the Lakers, because we're from LA or whatever, but like Staples Center is known for the Grammys, top tier concert. So just think yeah. about the ideas and the type of stuff that could happen with everything in that's affiliated with like Staples centers and Staples center in the past, it's just not Lakers. Like I think the, the evolution of that right there in entertainment in LA, it, 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 it's definitely leading for like other places to just start getting involved, involved in that. Like if you woke up this morning and saw yeah. that news yeah. and you didn't, and, and you didn't think yeah. about getting involved in crypto, if you've never been involved in it, then, you're, you're 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 just setting yourself setting yourself up for just being late to this deal. Yeah, I think I think to play off of what Traderverse was saying earlier, with if they, they can do it, anybody can. I would I would rephrase that personally to say, if a team like the Lakers is willing to take that high of a risk in doing it, then it would then then you'll see the domino effect of these smaller teams like would be willing to put their you know neck out there for it. Yeah, because there there's people who woke up this morning. Like, either they were mad about it or they were sad about it just because, like, Staples Center is just so monumental. So just them allowing that type of play to happen for, for like, L.A. history and just, like, NBA history for those who are fanatics of the Lakers outside of California and stuff like that, that's that, – it's a big deal. I think I th we're, all, we're gearing this all towards the Lakers, but we all know the biggest sports team orchestrated this deal, which is the L.A. Kings. So <laughs> – 
and you know everyone knows hockey is the best sport there is but <laughs> there's a couple guys with hands raised uh so sam if you if you want to if you want to share i'll spin it to you yeah i think um you know everybody's focusing like you guys have been saying on the lakers and even just the staples center in general but crypto.com has been going kind of heavy in the sports scene i mean for the last month or two i don't know if anybody watches a lot of ufc but even the last two uh, events they've had, every fighter has come out with crypto.com just largely emblazoned across the chest of whatever they're wearing when they're walking out. So, I mean, they're already going into sports like crazy. And I feel like it's not just, I feel like the Staples Center is such a huge deal that it kind of brought it more mainstream right now as far as what they're trying to do with this. But they've been in it for a minute uh, with UFC and they've been going pretty heavy in there. And I think Staples Center was just jump that they needed to kind of get more of a presence to where people kind of paid more attention to them. So, I mean, d- back to what like uh, rise was saying earlier, it's like they, they're, they're going to, they're going to kind of use the sports thing, I think to get their name out there more than they can with anywhere else to where, I mean, people watch sports all day. It's, it's what people do when they're not doing nothing, you know? And I think that they've been around for a minute and just to focus on Staples center and the Lakers is kind of just a small portion of what they're actually doing, you know? No, I think it's, I, I think it's, it may be just a small portion. It's definitely where a lot of eyes are. Just like you said, it's what people do. In the- oh, for sure. Um, yeah. But it's to- such a big deal, Staples Center and the Lakers. And I think that that's what's, that was the big one that they needed. But they didn't Thank, you Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Well, something that I think Dogecoin Rise just said that I wasn't thinking about is the non sports things that are in there, like the, the Grammys. I mean, that's huge, too. Whenever now you've kind of intersected, you know, it's L.A. There's a lot of, uh, you know, entertainment besides sports that are there. And I wasn't thinking about that. Whenever I thought of Staples, I always just think of the sporting aspect of it. And definitely the Lakers bring in a lot of eyes or the Clippers or the Kings. If you're if hockey's your now, thing. Now, you know, what will be so big um, for the arena if they if they um, it'll be so dope if on every napkin at the arena, it has like the Crypto.com logo. And stuff like that, and like a QR code and a napkin, man. They they could take they could just take the marketing to another level right there. Oh, they could integrate, like you said, napkins. It'll be on the court, I'm sure. Uh, they could integrate in so many ways for so many different things that they have. And I, for one, am excited about it. Like I said, I love that it's the name Crypto.com. I mean, obviously, I'm sure they such spent- good branding for the space. Like such yeah, like. And- it's going to be amazing just to see like the Grammys live at crypto.com arena, you know, and that's, Beyonce. that's exactly, that's exactly why I decided to jump in and buy that coin because just me being like having a lot of like marketing skills and stuff like that. I'm just like, Oh, this is, if, if we were seeing this and getting excited, getting excited about it with UFC or like seeing it like in, in um, overseas soccer leagues, like just now this is, this is all over your face now, even more. And like, it'll be on Laker jerseys. It'll be everywhere. Yeah. And you've seen they have a commercial out with Mount, Matt Damon now, and I almost guarantee you this January when the, the Super Bowl happens, when the, when the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, um, you will see uh, a, a commercial there that is for Crypto.com. You know they're going to spend the money on that commercial. Are the Cowboys yeah, think- the NFL team? The Cowboys? <laughs> they, yeah, what is that? What is that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> America's team. That's right. That's America's team. That's right. Oh, are you talking about the Wild West? <laughs> I think that's one of the things you're going to see that's been so great is, um, you know, you were talking about like the mainstream marketing of the whole thing. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of millennials in here that get it. Gen Zers obviously probably get it. But I can tell you from my boomer father, not an insult, uh, and then, you know, Xers and Ys, like there's still a plethora of people out there that don't even under- that don't even know what crypto is. They just think it's this this trendy thing that that younger people are willing to 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 risk because you know, for whatever reason. And uh, they watch, but one thing that like every generation still does collectively is we watch sports and they're all going to, they're all going to see that. And they're all going to, they're all going to be like visually intrigued by, by what it is now, because now suddenly this thing that's been part of their world forever is talking about it. You'll see, you'll see adoption uh, boom to some degree. I I can't say yet how high or how, you know, what, to what level, but this is, this is going to do nothing but good things for it. It's magic in there, honey. Yeah, I think it's going to be massive for sure, because um, me and Rise interviewed someone yesterday. What's his name? Paul Garino or something. And he's in the marketing and talent agency for sports. And he was saying that basically all the athletes and stuff, they're all asking to get paid like in crypto, like figure that um, into their 
contracts and stuff. So this is even a big push for the athletes. Like, okay, here we go. You for know? sure. One of the highest play, paid NFL players, I think in 2020, may have been 2019, he asked to get paid in Bitcoin. And after all, you know, after the price rose so much, it actually, he was the number one paid player in all of the NFL. And it was, a, it was an offensive lineman. It wasn't Russell Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, it, right? It wasn't Russell Kong. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, no, I know Russell Kong loves his Bitcoin, um, and he did get paid partly in it. Uh, but I believe this person was on the Chiefs, and, and it wasn't Trevor Lawrence either. Um, and because Trevor Lawrence is a rookie this year, this happened last year. Maybe. Oh the year. no 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 no! Is it, it? Was it the dude from the Panthers? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah, the Panthers. I know, yeah, I know who you're talking about now. Yeah. And after it was all said and done, he ended up being paid better than everyone else because, anyway, it showed him as a visionary. You know. Brady's deep into Bitcoin. Uh, you know, he's even had his profile picture with his cool little laser eyes. And uh, I think he even paid one Bitcoin to get his 600th touchdown ball back out of the stand. So, uh, yeah, to you guys point, sports and players and their embracing of the, the space is becoming wider and wider. And certainly this arena makes it uh, more apparent rather uh, than ever. I know um, DraftKings is trying to get into the NFT space, too. So, ooh. It, there's the bridge of NFTs into sports gambling. So I'm surprised like Barstool Sports hasn't come up with something that. I'm, they I'm will. Glad you, I'm glad you mentioned that though, um, Rick, because yesterday when Christine and I were interviewing that one dude, I was telling him like DraftKings needs to implement crypto into their betting and eventually like put out their their own coin for their platform for some sort of incentive as well. Absolutely. And I went ahead and um, posted the link up or on top of the chat it says um it's a post from front office sports and it says crypto.com has launched an absolute marking onslaught in sports psg 30 million for three years ufc 175 million for 10 years f1 100 million for five years 76ers 10 million for six years montreal canadians aston martin series a now an la arena will bear its name for 700 million like they're busy over there <laughs> yeah they're, they're, they, uh... They're going to sponsor my, my Twitter spaces for <laughs> one, billion, one billion Bitcoin. Love it. <laughs> good. It's good thinking, right? That's next level thinking right there. Uh, I see somebody's got their hand up for some time. Name cannot be blank. What's up? Hey, yeah, I'm I'm a ghost from Canada. I might change the name, but um, I just want to mention, like, I don't know if you guys care about Canada, but they're actually one of the main exchanges in Canada because I don't know if you guys know, we don't have Binance out here. So we've all been, anyone in Canada, this has kind of been the main source since it's been about 10 cents for us, maybe even less, which is probably like five cents in U.S., something like that. So this is this is just the beginning, I think, of getting into the U.S. market because this is like it's just going to start blowing up even more here in Canada from now on. Are you pretty happy with Crypto.com? Uh, yeah, using it, it's the fees are pretty low. It works pretty quickly. I don't like that. I mean, the app could be more intuitive, I think. It's not as easy to use, but um, it is what it is. I mean, it works. So <laughs> Yeah, complain. it works. And we then the, uh, the debit card the and everything is actually like a game changer. What they give you like percent money back on Netflix and Spotify and all those things. So I know a lot of people are using that like just as a regular debit card, twenty four seven. Do you have the Do you have the metal one? I actually haven't gotten to myself yet, but I know a lot of people that do. It's the metal card is just so cool. Like I just love the metal debit card. But that's <laughs> do you slam it on the table when you? Pay yes, for I dinner? do. I have one. I have a couple. <laughs> Drop it accidentally just so it clinks. <laughs> I like go out of my way to get them just because they're that Rick, cool. I bet, I bet you're so extra with that metal card. I bet you flash it in the sun for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I am. That's the only guy my shoe is extra. So <laughs> uh, that's awesome. But yeah, it is. It this is big. It isn't. It isn't going to stop because it's 20 years. So I, I like that. It also shows some long term. You know, this isn't. If anybody did think it was a flash in the pan, but something I can't remember who said it earlier about the generation thing. This does market to a generation that's normally not marketed to crypto. And you're talking the Gen Xers and the boomers because normally they just they, they think they know what it is, but they really don't care to look into it. And let me give an example. I actually talked to a financial advisor the other day and I said I mentioned something to him, to him about crypto. And he said, you know, the thing about crypto, that's really not going to take off until they find a way to centralize it. And I was like that will ever happen. And uh, he said, well, I, I, I don't know. And I said, look, I don't think it's thought, you know, now crypto.com may have some central aspects to it, but there, there's, there's not like a movement amongst people that hold Bitcoin to go back to a banking type of system. And so I just think it's kind of a generational divide over what each generation holds important with their money. And I think maybe this, this naming of this arena will at least make them look further into it. So maybe, you know, 
I can understand maybe where they're coming from for wanting to be centralized, and they they can understand where I'm coming from where I want it to be decentralized. It's a it's just a good conversation. I guarantee you, we're not the only ones having this conversation today. There's people around their water cooler today saying, and they named it what? And you know, you guys say you're hearing it on sports radio already or whatever radio that people are upset. It's starting a conversation, and and that is good. That's that's like saying like EVs aren't going to take off until they accept until they take gas as a fuel. They, that is such a good analogy, and I'm going to keep that one. I'm going <laughs> to you may that. have it, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly right. If we created something better, but it's not going to succeed until it does what the old one does. Yeah, right, that, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 you but, can't be two things at once and be good at them. Okay, and I'm uh, 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 sporks. You can't uh, not a good fork, not a good spoon, <laughs> and uh, El Caminos, not a good truck, not a good car. Uh, so yeah, can't be centralized and decentralized and actually uh, succeed at both of them. In my mind, in my mind. Uh, one other person that had their hand raised up, uh, HP El Bandito. What's up? What's up, everybody? Uh, two things um, about this crypto.com at the Staples Center. Number one, uh, the Staples Center is known for all these events, and it's also known for the being around the convention center. But number two, uh, that goes in a little further into what you guys are talking about. Um, you know, American sports and events that, you know, in arenas like that, we need to understand. And I, re and I retweeted this yesterday, um, the Staples Center or Crypto.com will be holding the Olympics in 2028. So this is more of this is just starting for them as far as marketing. But 2028, we might see the first Olympics that, you know, who knows? Tickets might be NFTs and everything's done, you know, digitally um at that point so that's something to really keep in mind thanks for having me on that so, what if, what if the gold medal is an nft asset backed nft oh love where you're thinking there love it man and that that 2028 i mean things move fast that, that could happen i mean i don't think that's completely crazy to think that that could happen and just to make sure i understood correctly is he saying that la has the olympics in 2028 yeah we have them in 2028 yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff at, I keep on wanting to say Staples Center. Well, uh, um, basketball for sure. Um, they're spreading out the Olympics throughout the city, but uh, basketball and I think uh, indoor volleyball maybe will be held uh, inside the arena. Everything else will be at different locations throughout the sure. city. Just as any city does, but I guarantee you every day that the Olympics is going on, something will be going on in that arena, whether it be basketball or volleyball or some other indoor sport. Well, they're we not also gonna have the convention center across the street, a bunch of hotels, so it's primed. Man, I, I did not. That's 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 good info about the Olympics uh, that it's going to be over there. That that probably got it made that price go up even more that it was going to go up to uh, you know the seven hundred million they got for it. Um, do you guys think for crypto.com? Let's say you're crypto.com and uh, you're you're looking at where to put your marketing money. Do you think that was good? That was wise spending. Do you think seven hundred million dollars they'll get back in out of it? Yes, absolutely. I do Without too. a doubt. I mean, I, go ahead, Joshua. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, I've been pretty much quiet today because my CRO story is actually very depressing. <laughs> I actually bought all-time highs back in March and staked it for six months, and I didn't get a card because I staked it for rebates on the exchange accidentally again. And, well, once the six-month unlock happened, it, it went all the way down to 60% down, and then it came back up, close to break even, and it dumped again. And, well, I mean, throughout this whole journey, right, there was something actually that I noticed about crypto and marketing itself. Like you guys were talking about mainstream marketing, social media marketing. So the thing is, the crazy thing is crypto.com was doing everything, not now, since um, May. I don't know if you guys know, but they actually started paid uh, Twitter tweets, you know, promoting it all over Twitter. And the reason I actually sold my crypto.com little lower than break even when I staked it, uh, and well, I, I haven't bought back in and now I'm regretting it, but... It was because I saw a particular tweet, you know, and that I saw 147K likes on it. And uh, that's that's crazy. You know, you don't see so many tweets with that. And, and I had seen that tweet at least six times in advertisements over a period of time. So I knew they were pumping a lot of money into marketing and not seeing the price move often, right? Um, well, I mean, I didn't sort of get it. So I was like, okay, fine. It's probably just worth selling it off. But um, where I'm coming to is, right, what... There's, this is another form of marketing that I've sort of been exploring in crypto recently, and that's saturation. And well, they saturate quite literally all the markets, advertisements, billboards, everything with that name. And um, last cycle, I actually think that uh, cryptocurrency was VeChain, Matic, and like a couple of others. They didn't do mainstream marketing, but they saturated social media with that. And and the thesis is that you know if you see a cryptocurrency or a name enough of times, you end up buying it. So what crypto.com, in my opinion, had been doing is since May they have been 
saturating entire social media with, um, well, marketing, basically putting their name out there. And people had seen the name enough of times that every single person know what it was. And, um, well, they left all the biggest stuff for the end. Like, uh, as some someone actually pointed out, like the whole past month, they had been partnering up with all sporting events. But that was actually so much under the radar. They didn't actually pr- full-fledged promote it. But now that they purchased this big stadium, you know, $700 million. So as Smart Trick pointed out, and as Trader was, your question was, would they make it back? I actually think that $700 million sale is something that will gain headlines without paid marketing. And that is the biggest thing because now you have eyes from all across the world to see why they actually did it. And then they see what they've done over the past few months. And I think that, you know, saturating the entire market with it while also building fundamentally and then finally blowing it up with one huge thing was their eventual goal. And of course, from now, it's going to be the way upward. So I, I I actually think this is what they did. And it's an incredibly smart strategy and something that I didn't have foresight to see. Uh, well, not not to load up and hold on to it. I was just like, okay, I got rid of it. I was like, okay, let me <laughs> break even and then let me stake in the future if I want a credit card. But well, it, it was a sad story. It's probably one of my saddest stories in crypto apart from leverage trading. But yeah, um, it's all good though. But I, I like CRO though. They're, they're doing some great stuff. And I think they accomplished the only one competitor in sports that I do see them having is Chili's.com because they have also partnered up with um, all sporting industries. And um, well, yeah, I mean, it's going to be sort of a competition of who gets it because if I'm not wrong, even Chili's has partnered up with UFC and CRO. So it's it's about which avenue or which one of these um, succeeds, you know, successfully. So I have no idea how much Chili's paid for it, but yeah. Oh, well, that's that's sort of the basics of all that I have to outline about CRO. But yeah, I definitely think they're going to make their worth back. And pretty sure this is like a five, 10 year investment down the line, the 700 million. It seems like it. Someday we're going to have uh, leveraged trading uh, sad stories, Joshua. And yeah, I want to hear your sad story whenever, because <laughs> I, I think anybody that's down <laughs> may have those stories. <laughs> so be yeah, my, my sad story taught me never to trade or leverage trade without a stop loss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be. That'd be wise. You, you could you could wreck yourself pretty easily. Maybe you did. That's probably your sad story. Is that? Uh... Yeah, yeah. It's an incredibly sad story. It was. It was. I still remember that night. It was the night when SNL happened. You know, and the oh, whole crypto market failed to break out. Oh. <laughs> it failed to break out of the like fifty nine k border because so if it did, right? If Bitcoin did break that barrier, uh, I would have gone like. I was right, as in my thesis of the trade was perfect, which is why I didn't trade without a stop loss. And man, the liquidation was painful. It's my biggest loss till date in crypto. But yeah, well, but yeah, let, like you said, let's have that for another day. Yeah, yeah. Let's, I, I, we're gonna we're gonna swap scars on some days and just uh, compare different times we got wrecked, uh, how many times we lost our life savings. That would always be interesting. You know, I talked about the Super Bowl earlier about you know there will be a commercial. I, I didn't even realize this. I'm sure you guys that live in LA, of course, know this, but the Super Bowl is in LA this year, right? And so I went to the Staples Center site. Still staplecenter.com till Christmas, I guess. And uh, they, they're having a music festival there in February surrounding the Super Bowl. And it's, you know, it's Blake Shelton, Gwen Stefani, Green Day, Miley. It's, it's a lot of big, big artists there. And yeah, they'll be going there. It'll probably be televised on TV. I mean, pretty much right on December 25th, the returns start coming. You know, as soon as they put their name on the outside, the returns will probably start coming in as far as interest in, and, you know, exposure. Yeah, I want to hit on something Josh said about the you know saturation in marketing. Like, and you, you're absolutely right. You know, it's it's not who tweets unless it's Elon Musk because he's obviously Elon Musk, but he creates saturation with whenever he says something. But it's that that sense of FOMO when you hear everyone else tweeting about their token, their coin that they're holding, how it's going to the moon and win Lambos and all of that good stuff. That's when it really hits hard. It's the ripple effect and and the ripple effect of this agreement is well and you'll consider to continue to see those ripples right i mean 20 year agreement i think i think josh just said you know in five years or so uh five ten years maybe they'll recoup that i think it may end up being a bargain it'll be like uh george lucas selling star wars to to disney and uh you know if you look back on that deal at the time it seemed really big but now if you look back on it you think disney may have got a steal out of that and so yeah it may be the same thing where you're like wow all this exposure I wonder, here, here's a question we can look in retrospect for this. Would Staples say they got, you know, I'm sure it was probably a 20-year deal because the Staples Center is 15 years old, 20 years old, some, something like that. Uh, and I wonder if they would say that it was it was worth it. And I don't know what they paid. I'm sure it was much less because it was a different era. But uh, I'd, I'd like to know if they feel like they got the exposure from it because maybe they were dreaming like we're dreaming of, uh, man, everybody's going to hear about our office supplies and they're going to buy so I'll, much. I'll, fa- I'll fax them and ask. 
feel fax them. Yeah, see if you can call them on their landline and see, see what they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah I'll, I'll send them a letter in the USPS. We'll get it to them in the next five days. And so maybe in a couple of weeks, I can get that answer for you. Well, if you need to buy some paper and an envelope and a pen. I'll go to Staples. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can check out at Staples. And I'm sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, sure, sure they, they'll be able to do that. But yeah, just as a quick little reset, this is the Traderverse uh, hour that we do this every day here on Spaces, uh, at least Monday through Wednesday. On Thursday and Friday, we're not on Spaces. We're going to try to head over to Discord. And the reason I'm mentioning this is tomorrow's a very special day on Discord. Here's what I'll ask if you're in here listening is, first of all, follow the account that I'm speaking from right now, the Traderverse IO account. Follow it. But also uh, through our social channels, you'll want to get on Discord because tomorrow... I'm actually going to perform an AMA with Rick himself, uh, the other gentleman up here on the on the stage, and uh, we're going to talk about Traderverse. So if you're wondering, like, okay, I've really enjoyed these conversations recently. I've really enjoyed the talk. These guys seem like a lot of fun. I mean, that that voice of DeFi guy seems to really be on his game. You know, all these. There's more to it than that. There's definitely uh, Traderverse is so much more. It's a social network. It's got some AI components into it. It'll have its own token with a rewarding mechanism about it. We're going to talk about all of that tomorrow. We're going to set it up like a podcast, but if you will join us, you are more than welcome to ask in some questions. And, uh, you know, if you've got a question that I don't ask of Rick, then please listen in. So tomorrow, try to join us in over on Discord, and we will perform the AMA at the same time. It will be at, uh, uh, was it 1730 UTC? Try to use a world time so everybody can do that. But I invite all of you to go over there and join and ask some questions if you can. Yeah, 1230 to 130 Eastern for the people who live in the real world. And, you know, in the future, these West Coasters, obviously, it's 930 in the morning. So with your cup of joe, you can come join us. I'll tell you about how glorious the future is, um, not only for Traderverse, but um, for, for many other things. Uh, we're going to talk about, like, tokenomics and go through a white paper a little bit. And we really want to do a you know, Q&A session with all the members that are in our Discord because um, because, you know, we get a million questions and we want to start answering those questions because we're getting closer and closer to what we're building. And it's been a long process. And I know a lot of people in this room, you know, heard about us, uh, you know, months ago. And, you know, what we're doing is so big and uh, we're really excited to show it to you all uh, piece by piece um, and uh, have a lot of fun with it. Because, you know, these 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 I have enjoyed these daily talks, having uh, DeFi and Christine up here, um, you know, with us talking about the markets and all that stuff. The, the conversation that we have here is so much smaller to the grand conversation that we can have ultimately on Traderverse. So I, I look forward to having that talk with this expert next to me in the AMA world. Yeah, it, it is going to be really good. And I think people are starting to realize it. Uh, we, we have a Telegram channel as well. And somebody came in today and was like, wow, if this thing delivers on everything that's being said, this could be this could be really big. And this is maybe a little bit... Uh, not have enough eyes on it. So yeah, you're in here, just like a lot of things that we say, you are early. So uh, you know, if you know about Traderverse now, then you kind of may be in before everyone else to be able to kind of consume it, find a little bit more about it, maybe before the rest of the world does, because this will be big. We're, we're, we're more than just some some amazing talks Monday through Friday. We, we also, you know, this, this Traderverse uh, social network will be big. So make sure you're a part of it. And if you have any questions, you can come in tomorrow and, and find out. So, just to kind of wrap us up here in our last ten minutes. Did you guys, uh, did you guys buy the dip in the last, uh, the last few days, last day or so? Yeah, I'm looking at ETH right now, like seeing what what a good buy is. Like, there's a lot of people still saying like, you know, 8K, 10K by the end of the year with the, this whole Santa Claus run. Like, still think it's potential. You know, it has the potential to do so. You know, I was really eating up the dips when it was hitting, you know, 1800. But, um, you know, I, I, you know, I bought a actually, I bought a little. Um, some ETH today, actually, about you know five hundred bucks worth. Well, I definitely think we're having a little bit of consolidation right now, and you know, is it consolidation still a little bit before it heads a little bit more down before then up? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not financial advice because I can't predict the market in that way. But you know, I was reading a CoinDesk article today that suggested that usually when you get to the bottom of a dip, you get to a lot of the crowd kind of turning bearish, where they're like, "Oh, it's it's going to go down forever. It's awful." And I guess that depends whether this is, if, you know, to me, that may be the case whenever it's a, a bull run being for sure over. Uh, or is this a bull run that is just paused? Um, not financial advice, but I always think the holidays tend to be a good time for it. And, and I've explained that before in here that I think, uh, you know, whenever you're at the holidays and you're talking to aunts and your uncles and they don't know anything about uh, crypto, 
even what we talked about today of the crypto.com thing, this will spurn on conversation, which will give people great FOMO. Josh, what's up? I see you unmuted your mic. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mute myself. But yeah, um, no, what I was actually going to say is like um, you, you asked who bought the dip, right? So this was this was actually a unique play that, um, well, usually when I see a dip incoming, I use FIB levels to set up a short and that's usually always my play. But this time I actually did something different. I converted all to liquid cash, like as a BUSD. I just had it on my wallet and I was looking for a place that I can enter, which I think won't be affected by the market. And, yeah. you know, I think this has sort of, again, been the best play of my life. Um, there was this one play um, every year. Binance picks every season, I guess, like every every season, Binance picks six to nine projects that get listed on their platform. And, you know, it's sort of like an incubation program, right? So there was this one plot project that I knew that applied for it. I was like, okay, it's cool. So let me just like bet on it. So I, I went in with most of my liquid portfolio, like more than 75%. And I went in at 9.5 cents. And this was less than two and a half to three weeks ago, I think. Now it's at like 1.5 or $1.6. And wow. well, it, it went up all the way to $1.8. I think this has been the craziest play of my life. But yeah, the, the goal was to try to figure out, is there enough news around thing that is going to not let it get affected by the market? So, well, I mean, CRO was potentially one of those plays, but I actually cashed out my CRO and put it into this. So, well, turned out to be a good play. And yeah, there's like a couple of other plays I'm in as well, like all mid caps and not really the ones which is on centralized exchanges and stuff. You actually bring up a really interesting point about like getting into a new project early and like also kind of what we're saying about this whole bull run being potentially paused. Like, this, you know, a lot of people, I come from more of like the equity side, like I learned stocks before I, I dipped into crypto and I feel like that's, a, you know, very much many people's paths just because crypto is still really new, but you know, like it's the community and like the, the thing that I always tell myself, and obviously I give the disclaimer of this isn't financial advice, but the more people adapt and the more people form these communities, whether they're NFT communities or, you know, the Doge community or the SHIB community, like the sta- more stable and the market will be the more entrance the means there are more liquidity into this crypto industry which means you know it has plenty of time to run you know it, we're not being dictated by huge hedge funds you know saying oh it's time for me to sell for my my annual loss so i can you know wash it and you know do good on my taxes so like there's there's definitely different triggers in this market like you know mitch picks who's one of my favorite you know stock guys he has like this calendar every month it's like oh in april biotech seed up because of this and this there's there's no standard to this like a lot of people always see the the bitcoin then ethereum then large caps and all coins but like we've kind of seen that phase kind of shift yeah it still exists but like you know with these uh all coins that have cult communities and i say cult in the best way possible like there's people who are like i'm holding i'm holding because i know bitcoin was at one point uh, you know less than a dollar and if i just hold for forever like that could be worth thousands of dollars per coin that i hold so you know it's definitely a different mix and you know as long as the the sentiment of crypto and there's nothing that really makes it bearish like i could see a climate for a while yet for sure. Yeah. Oh, go, go on, Josh. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to cover a little bit more on the micro cap side of things. But yeah, you go ahead. Oh, no, I, I definitely want to hear about that. What I was just going to say is the sentiment. I think that's what everybody's trying to read during a dip is, is the is the dip just a little bit of a market correction? Or is there actually a sentiment that the that the assets are you know overvalued and therefore it'll slowly start to go down there? Yeah, no, I, I mean, there's also one more thing that people often fail to realize, like people often panic and sell in the dip. And well, I mean, they they FOMO and buy the top. But if people actually spend some time enough reading market cycles or fibs and stuff, you can actually predict when to buy, when to sell, you know, and identify potential tops or when there's a correction coming along. Like for me, I was fairly confident when ETH hits close to 4.8 to 5K, it's definitely having a correction. What I didn't see is that the whole market's going to have a correction with it. And well, it did. And um, that's primarily why I shifted from all my holdings to liquid cash. And I was looking for new plays. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this should, this should sort of go, be a goal for everyone. I mean, people can even take this as financial advice because everyone should mitigate. They shouldn't listen to anyone saying, but they should spend time to calculate their own risk, right? And well, I mean, that's the goal with any trading or any asset investments. And if you sort of calculate your own risk and well, you think through exactly how much you want to pull out, how much you want to risk through. If you just have that strategy in place, like whichever you buy into, right? Like you just need to keep, you just need to have management, really, like not even trading experience or anything. But if you just have good funds management, you can move in your money, pull out capital at the right time. Like 
that's sort of this there's this one group that i'm a part of that's exactly what we've been doing right like we've been buying into coins early and stuff like that pulling out like when we make a 200 or 300 percent profit we pull out our initials plus 10 or 20 percent profits and we let the rest uh, did we lose him yep he got rugged okay yep got got rugged but I, I think i see what he's saying although uh, he said something about it not necessarily experience, but having funds management. But I think having funds management comes from experience sometimes. Is It's just like he said, where he said uh, he had traded without a stop loss uh, in leverage trading before. He doesn't do that anymore. So he has good funds management, but that comes from... Uh, Learning. <laughs> right. It's that expensive education sometimes of you just learn the hard way, the school of Market hard Market tuition is what I like to call it. it. Tuition. Love it. Love it. And yeah, so... Yeah. And you know, I'll bet... He had heard before that of, you know, hey, make sure you have stop loss, especially in leverage trading. But sometimes you just have to experience it for yourself, right? Uh, you can you can learn, you can read, you can you can be told all these things. But, you know, sometimes you just have to learn for yourself. And, and yep. that's where you get into having some mar market management and kind of looking at your portfolio. How much are you exposed? Can I handle being counter? Because that's that's trading, right? Is, you know, I want to I want to buy at the bottom. I want to sell at the top. So if you're selling and you're selling at the top, that means everybody's been buying and you're thinking counter to what everybody else is doing. Or if you're buying at the bottom, everybody's been selling to make it low. Yeah. You, I, you're going to buy. I, I think, you know, I bet you a lot of people in this room can agree with me that the way to learn options by failing at options is the fastest way to learn how the options work. <laughs> That's a, a great way to put it. And yeah, like you said, it's your, it's your market tuition of you fail at it and then you can learn from it from there. And then you start getting some, you know, it hurts, right? Whenever you actually have that failure, it, it stings. And it makes you say, like, what do I have to do to make sure this sting doesn't happen again? So, yeah, there, there's there's different ways to do that. But, yeah, usually it's, you know, just money management, exactly what he said. Absolutely. Josh, we'll, uh, we'll let you finish off what you were going to say, and then we'll wrap this bad boy up, and uh, we'll do it all again tomorrow. Josh may be gone for, gone for good, but that's all right. That's all right. I always love him whenever he's coming in here and sharing his knowledge. He's very well-rounded and can give knowledge of NFTs or uh, you know the market itself. Always good. Great to talk with all of you today about uh, this uh, Staples Center changing to Crypto.com Arena. We're probably going to have to talk about that more in the future as we see kind of how it you know unfolds a little bit. Tomorrow, like I said, we're going to be over on the Discord server, so make sure that uh, you join us over there. Uh, always follow uh, those that are up here on the stage. Follow the Traderverse account. Follow Christine and follow Smart Rick. Uh, I'm not up here on stage, but you can also follow my personal account at Voice of DeFi, and uh, you can follow me around the internet as well and uh, hear other things that we are doing. But tomorrow's the big one. Tomorrow's where we learn the most that we have talked about Traderverse as a social network. We will talk about tomorrow on Discord. So at uh, 1730 UTC, uh, that's a world time. Uh, Rick gave us what he said, the, the real world talks in, which I think is... Uh, 1230. 1230 Eastern, 930 Pacific. Yeah, yeah. 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central, for you Central people, um, near that that other team called the yeah. Dallas Cowboys that y'all... Yeah, remember. Mountain Mountain. we don't care about. Like, you just yeah. figure it out. <laughs> El Paso, those kind of area. Yeah, they'll have to just get out the calculator, that sort of thing. Just kind of figure it out. Anyway, yeah, we will see you guys tomorrow on the Discord server. Let's talk a little Traderverse tomorrow. Learn a little bit about the project. Until next time, I'll see y'all then. I love all of you. Later.